I am heading to Wilmington this morning. Uh, we're going to set a new 4 ton 13 seer Amana system. Uh, ASZ 1348. And an ARUF smart frame air handler. So I'm looking forward to that. I like the new air handlers. So we'll get some footage of that and see how it turns out. We are recovering the refrigerant from the train system. 4 ton XC 1200, 12 seer heat pump. There's a reversing valve. Uh, Manifold there. Right there. This is our TXV. Defrost controller. Uh, new contactor. Uh, 521. And a dual run capacitor. This thing's going bye bye. There's our makeshift one. They don't leave you any outlets to work with. I use this, uh, it's like a Zebra Instruments adapter cord, so you can plug in any uh, disconnect or anything like that. You see both our ground and the neutral are on the ground bar. And then we're taking one leg of the hot for 120 volts to run the uh, <coughs> recovery machine or vacuum up or whatever we need to. It's a good way to get some power in some remote locations like a rooftop but they don't have any plugs. It's a cool thing. It has a little light on it to let you know uh, if the voltage is correct. But we're going to get this thing torn out of here and then get the new amount unit in here and uh, keep it posted. I have my nitrogen set up and a pro flush from Diversitech. And I am going to, what I already did was blood the nitrogen through the lines here at about 140 pounds, a little burst to clear the line. Then I'll do the same thing with the pro flush. Then I'll come behind it with some more nitrogen and blow out the lines. Uh, because we have two things working against us here. We have R22, has mineral oil left in the line we want to clear out. And we also have uh, acid in the system. So those are two very uh, bad things we don't want left in that line. Now there shouldn't be much in there because most of it is probably in the evaporator or still in the compressor. So there uh, shouldn't be much in there, but we just want to make sure. We don't want to risk anything, especially with a brand new system. Now the unit is now set and piped up. As you can see down here, got the little risers underneath it. Get it off the ground a little bit. Even though it's a pretty open area here. Not many trees around, just the one. So. We won't really have an issue with leaves in there, but leaves always find their way in there. And you can look over there and see there's debris inside this area from somewhere. So, uh, be able to clean out from underneath it. Maybe get that base pan to drain a little bit more effectively. But right now we're about to put nitrogen pressure on it. And the test air factors in the temperature of the line when you're doing a nitrogen test. So, wild swings in temperature won't affect it. So, it's a really cool way to do nitrogen tests, but that's our next step here. And then we'll be pulling the vacuum. Some of our other differences between, let's say, the Amana and the Goodman uh, counterpart is you'll have a different defrost controller. I haven't seen this one a whole lot. I mean, this is my first Amana install, so but I know it's different than the Goodman one because I'm very familiar with that one. Um, comfort alert diagnostics. You have your three compressor leads through there. They diagnose if there's an issue going on. Let's say you have a call for a compressor and the compressor's not coming on. Uh, it's able to recognize that able to recognize the extended run times, uh, more extended than it would be normally. Uh, it's able to recognize if you lose your signal to the start winding, run winding, and interprets whether or not your compressor is failing or the capacitor is failing. There's a lot of cool stuff it does. Whether there's a contactor, there's some low voltage stuff, everything else is pretty Goodman-esque. Different color. Fan motor is, uh, I think it was 810. RPM 830 RPMs instead of uh, 1100 or whatever they are in Goodman. So it's a little bit quieter, has a compressor blanket and things like that. But cool, it looks a little bit cooler. But I'm looking forward to seeing it start up for the first time. Well, it looks like we're staying right around our mark here. 130. It's been sitting here for about three minutes, so I'll let it go to about 10 minutes. Make sure we look good to go. Put little bubbles on them, make sure everything's all right. And then uh, we'll be ready for a vacuum. Now the vacuum is rolling. It'll be a little while before uh, it's finished. Let it run it down and then we'll be finalizing the low voltage and starting her up. I got a little bit of armor flex here I gotta put on the line. And then we'll be rocking and rolling. And of course I gotta redo the electrical over there. Never the pump's done. Alright, I'm going to uh, go get our readings from inside wet bowl and our outside dry bowl. 
and we set our super heat's about 53, and I assume we're going to be somewhere in the 20 to 25 range. We're going to make the calculation and find out what we require. You can't really see the air handler that well. There's the front of it. Supply duct work down there. Copper lines that's going in there. We have our overflow switch there. There's a condensate pump to pump the uh, condensate out of the cross space since the cross space is below grade. I always love that. Uh, we're letting the system run for a few minutes. This is ARUF48 smart frame air handler. I really like this air handler. Really cool. I like the way the coil, you can change it from left hand to right hand discharge very quickly. Coil's easy to take in and take out. All aluminum evaporator. It's just nice. I just like it. But uh, that's all for the uh, air handler. You can't hardly see anything anyway. So I'm going to go check again outside. We're going to have to start charging. All right, the Amanda's running in heat now. Went ahead and checked it out in cooling and set the charge. And we are just letting it roll in heat mode just to make sure everything's working out all right. But everything looks to be doing well. Pressures are coming back up. Pressures dive down a little bit at the start of the heat mode. So we'll start building back up on both ends. We'll check back in a couple minutes and see how far they are. All right, here we are a couple minutes down the road. You see where our pressure's already climbed up to the 300s. Then 100 on the low side. So you see it kind of builds up on a heat pump over several minutes. Uh, whereas in gas, you might have a nice super blast of warm air. Heat pump's more of a gradual thing. So, weather's doing well. Uh, we'll check on it for a few more minutes and I think we're wrapped up at this point.